welcome back to my channel um <laughs> sorry it's been a while see i have this grand plan that i'm gonna make a video every week or at least every other week but life happens now that i'm better at time management um perhaps i can keep to my original plan so we shall see about that um <laughs> today we're gonna talk about how to prepare for your oral qualifying exams PhD students in the house Who? <laughs> it's that time again in my department when new students are taking or new students environments are taking their oral qualifying exams and this kind of determines whether you're gonna go ahead and get a PhD or you're gonna bump down to a master's as you can imagine there's a lot of stress around this exam so I kind of decided to put together a couple um, steps plans that I took to prepare for my qualifying exam and I helped um, three other people prepare for the exam let's go ahead and get started for me plan number one that I will tell you is to know your committee members Depending on your institution, your committee members might be people in your thesis committee or not. For my department, they try to make my members to be not people on my thesis committee, but there's two professors that are actually on my thesis committee. So there's going to be some overlap depending on how many, pe how many professors are in your program or how many professors are in the entire university and what the policy is in your institution. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you to know who you're, who's gonna be on your committee because then you, depending on their expertise, that's how they're gonna ask you questions. So no one is gonna ask you a question that in areas where they're not like 100% um, confident in that area because I mean you can bullshit your way through the answer and they probably won't know it so it's probably best to know who's on your committee so yeah my tip number one would be to know who's on your committee number two would be to talk to students in the department about their experience now this is not to say that they should tell you questions on the exams but really to tell you how they're how they prepared, what to expect. Like for me, for me in my department, you come in, uh, see your questions for 30 minutes, and in that 30 minutes, you make a game plan of what questions you're gonna ask, what order you're gonna ask them. Then after that 30 minutes, you step out, and they kind of talk with them amongst themselves. You know, sometimes they talk about um, your training, your background up until that moment. Other times, they just chat among themselves. It's probably a long time since they caught up with each other. So, you shouldn't worry about how long it takes them to call you back in. And then when you call you back in, you're gonna be asked to answer your questions. That was my experience. Then, after you're done with all the questions, they're gonna ask you to step out again for them to consolidate how well you did to grade you. And after that, they're going to Call you back in, give you your verdict. You know, whether you did well, some areas where you did great, some areas where you should improve on, and whether you're gonna be you're gonna continue to your proposal. Or if you fail, God forbid, because you probably don't want to fail all the work you've done into put into um, your PhD up until now, the application and whatnot. If you fail, you're gonna be bumped out to a master's. Yeah. Don't fill the exam. To talk to your students in the department who know how you can prepare for your or qualifying exam. Number three would be to discuss your protected study time with your mentor. <laughs> for me, I had well about roughly a month, but even in that month, well, I wouldn't even call it a month because I was still coming to the lab to help out with stuff. But my really, really, well, semi, or can I say three quarter dedicated time was two weeks before my exam where I would just come in to check on my experimental models 
make solutions if I need to or make calculations so calculate my data so just make sure you have like your dedicated time where you're not in the lab full time and you have time to study for your exam yeah three would be to have that dedicated time that you protect jealously because if you still come to the lab or if your mentor makes you come to the lab and you don't have enough time to study and you fail well you're replaceable right they're just gonna get somebody else make sure that you get your dedicated study time number three is to study as hard as you can I mean that's a given so study as much as you can practice with if you are a visual learner you can look up like YouTube videos about the particular subject you're studying about or you can look up pictures in textbooks if you're someone that likes to write stuff down to help you learn practice with that read take the books away rewrite it on the paper just figure out what study method works for you so study as much as you can guys i mean number five now is do not be afraid to approach people for help as you can see this is the kind of like my video trend i guess my last tip you know i said like practice with people in the in the department this is also true here so practice with friends because this helps you so much and help them to like, guide them with questions to ask you and how you should study. Yeah. Also, have them quiz you. I mean, that's practicing with them. And my next tip would be to practice using a whiteboard because everyone, when you tell them something or try to purchase some information to them, Pictures work so much better than words or text, so make sure you practice with the board when you have friends practice with you. I'm going to show you like a, an example of a drawing that was made with someone that I practiced with right there. Um, so make sure that you're comfortable with drawing your answers and explaining your answers to your committee because it's going to help so much. And it just makes things so much easier and if they ask you follow-up questions you already have your cue up on there and you can just walk them through it or add or remove stuff as needed practice with a book or a board when you're preparing for your exam next is to use a strategy see this was kind of something that I wish I knew when I went into my exam I had no idea and I was just like, oh, okay, I'll just go ahead and start with what I'm comfortable answering and then end with something that I'm not really 100% about. This was kind of terrible for me because it only ended up making me really flustered at the end of my exam. Because, I mean, I was visibly shaking. And when they asked me to step out after my exam, I was just in a corner, like, shaking because I was like oh my gosh I did so terribly I totally see when you when you end up with something that you're not comfortable with you forget about the things that you did that you did really well in the beginning so my one of my other friends um she actually had a different strategy than I did she started with questions she was 100% about in the middle was something she wasn't really sure like 80% about 80 to 50 percent about and then she ended with something that she was 100 percent about so then you have that peak and then a little wall and then the peak so then your confidence is like really boosted by the time you're done so if that's something you think will work for you yeah definitely do that and i had a friend that she started well she practiced amazingly did everything that you're supposed to do but a voice was not loud and that was something that were counted against her because the committee couldn't really understand what she was saying when she asked these questions so then after that whenever she had a committee meeting with her thesis advisory she always comes to the microphone my suggestion to you guys with the low voice low pitch go into your exam with the microphone because you never know you can also 
if you don't feel comfortable about that you can also ask your committee about it and just explain to them that your voice is low and you would like to use a microphone so that they can hear what you say so that you don't have to repeat stuff so yeah if your voice is not that loud go with a microphone I'm Nigerian we always talk loud so I don't need a microphone but if you're someone that's low pitch be sure to go in with a microphone another tip that I have is to speculate this is something that actually <laughs> So when I when after my exam I was calling and I was giving feedback and what they told me was that I was afraid to speculate. So I'm gonna tell you, even though you're not hundred percent sure, at least you'll be able to make connections. So if you're able to make connections, just say what you think is they gonna be the right answer and they will tell you whether it is or isn't and help you to kind of like reason through it. So if you just say like I don't know, then there's nothing they can help you with. So if you like have a prompt or like just say something have an um, how they educated guess then they will help you um, answer the question so speculate you get so much points for speculating so yeah this is something that I've, lear I've learned since my exam and I do it all the time now when I, when I present if you don't know the exact answer you probably have the information that will help you answer that question unless it's a yes or no question if it's an open-ended question then you probably have it in your toolbox about how to answer the question so do not be afraid to speculate and the next tip that I have for you is to read research articles like original articles about the topic that the major topics of the people in your committee because you're gonna be asking some form with another experiment, experimental design question. If you are a first year student, I did my qualifying exam at the end of my first year. I'd been in a lab for a while because I did a year after college in a research lab, so I kind of had an idea about experimental design, but I had no idea how to like design experiments in a field that I'm not familiar with. And I wish I had read papers about that. This is probably not a video for now, but I will probably make a video about my things that I regret about approaching my oral exam and things you shouldn't do. But anyways, for this video, this is something that you should do. Read research articles in the field of your committee members. So yeah, this will help you so much with experimental design questions. Because for me, I had a question about neurons. And one of my members was like, so um, make a graph of how the neuron is firing. And then I just like drew like lines, you know, like dot dot dot. Or like straight lines <laughs> indicating like firing, neurons firing rapidly and neurons that are not firing as slowly. <laughs> and it was just like, oh, okay, I'll give it to you because you're not familiar with neuron, um, neuronal recordings. But <laughs> I urge you to read papers um research original papers about experimental design because you never know and last but not least go with snacks i mean it's not mandatory but it's just it's courteous right because if your exam is in the morning somebody in your committee might have skipped breakfast you know you all know what happens when you're hungry and have low blood sugar you're cranky and you don't want that to happen to somebody on your exam um, committees. Go with snacks. You don't have to break the bank. If you're a baker, just do something at home. Like I did. I had the burning materials. So I just put something together and just took it with. If you're not a baker, you can go to Dollar Tree. They have delicious cookies and snacks for a dollar. And they have like this beautiful platter trays for a dollar. So you can just like arrange your snacks on that platter so it looks expensive but it's really one dollar. Or at least maybe total will be ten dollars, which is an investment. It's an investment to your future. So, go with snacks to kind of avoid that cranky examiner. Also, expect everyone in your committee to ask you a question. So, in my department or in my institution, the I guess the rumor is that your university member is not supposed to ask you a question during your oral qualifying exam. But I found, I learned the hard way that 
No, they are. They can talk if they want to. So I, I didn't prepare for him because I was like, oh, he's not gonna ask me a question. But he ended up asking me two or three questions that I was like, what? Yeah. Everyone, if they are in the room and they are professors, questions from them is fair game. So prepare as you should. Now to just recap what I said, it is one, know your committee members, two, talk to students and department about their experience, three, discuss with your mentor and protect your study time, four, study as hard as you can, of course, this is going to determine your life, your future, so study as much as you can. Um, do not be afraid to approach people for help. Practice with friends on paper on the board draw things out Use a strategy Use pictures to explain your answers Speculate oh my gosh speculate um, Read research papers about the questions topic in the department your core exams And last uh, well second to last um, is to go with snacks because you want to avoid cranky cranky examiners and what i said last was um to expect questions from everyone on your committee because i mean it's a fair game so good luck let me know your qualifying exam is let me know when your qualifying is if you are taking your qualifying exams and let me know what what I forgot to add, how you prepared for your exam. So, thank you all so much for watching. Bye. Until next time, I'm going to try to be more often than posting a video monthly. So, thank you all. Mwah.